your attention, please. Hello, faith family and friends. Now it's time for Agape Church announcements. So let's find out what's up. I consider myself an expert on the subject of grace. Not because I understand it better than anyone else. I just know it when I see it. And I know it when I experience it because frankly, I've needed a lot of it in my life. But even with all the years of messing up and needing what Christians call God's grace, I'm still left struggling with the most basic of questions. What is grace? You see, I think way too often we in the church overcomplicate something that at its purest form could not be more simple. You see, grace is gained righteousness at Christ's expense. Meaning that with Jesus' death on the cross, he purchased for us a right relationship with God that we could not earn for ourselves. Because grace is received and can't be earned. And once this gift is realized, it adequately covers everything, meaning every debt is canceled, every single sin, past, present, and future. So get ready and come expectantly because grace is a growing revolution and carnal execution, meaning that as we leave the flesh behind and as we die more and more to ourselves, we are stepping into a movement that continues to change the world by giving redemption and communion to everyone. God God is granting rest after condemnation ends because a gap has been realized and connected entirely. A bridge has been built, the battle has been won, and God reigns and Christ is exalted. So simply put, grace is proof that God really always can endure. The plumb line, absolute, brings order and perfection. Used throughout the ages to build the monuments of man, God spoke to Israel through the prophet Amos about a plumb line, his word. It exposed their hypocrisy, their lies and adulterous ways. The plumb line of God's word stands today. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the message of the cross, needs to be proclaimed to bring repentance, righteousness, and to restore order in God's house. It's time to set the plumb line. Now it's time for our Sunday morning message. Who's ready for the word? Someone say yeah. Grab your Bibles and your notebooks and let's get ready to receive a life-changing word. I read from it. I read from it. I believe in it. I believe in it. I do what it tells me to do. I do what it tells me to do. Come on, family, let's eat. Let's eat, 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 eat. Hallelujah. Are you not entertained? Thank you, Dr. V. Turn with me in your Bible to Zechariah. Y'all like, where is that at? Zechariah is in the Old Testament. Y'all like, I'm just waiting for it to come on the screen. <laughs> it's in the Old Testament. It's one of the, the prophets. And if you would just go with me, we're going to get into our series. I'm grace for this. As you guys can see, the QR code is on the screen. Go ahead and pull your phones out because all of my notes and my slides are on this QR code so you can follow after me. I know you guys are wondering, well, why are the babies in here? Oh, because I, I made a request for the children to be in here. When you set a plumb line, the whole household should be in place. 
We should be one house. Somebody say one house. One house. And so this morning I'm asking you, I'm, I'm doing all this talking because I'm hoping that you're getting into the Old Testament in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 through 10. Somebody say, Zechariah. Zechariah. Speak to us. <laughs> y'all like, what? Zechariah is about to speak to us, y'all. And here we go. And it says, so he answered and said unto me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become plain. Oh my God. He and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace. Somebody say grace, grace. Grace, grace. Unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of the temple and his hands shall also finish it. Somebody say finish it. Finish it. Then you will know, somebody say, I'm going to know, that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For, for who has despised the day of small things, humble beginnings, new beginnings, startups? Who has despised that? For these seven, somebody say seven. Seven. Agape Church is in its seventh year. That's right. For these seven Rejoice to see the plumb line. Somebody say the plumb line. The plumb line. In the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord which scan to and fro throughout the earth. Somebody say thank you for the grace. Thank you for the grace. Father in heaven, we thank you for the grace. And now that we have opened up your scriptures, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit will open up our spiritual hearing. Lord, we ask that you would increase in us, that we may decrease, says that we would be filled up with grace, grace. We thank you now, we give you glory for all that you're about to pour into us. In Jesus' name and all of God's people say amen. 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 And amen. amen. High five your neighbor and say love like him. As you, ha as you have your seats in the living room of God, again, um, if you didn't get the QR code, um, it is up there. Again, I'm so great, graciously and greatly excited for being up here before you to give you this word of grace, grace. How many of you guys were with us last week? Oh my goodness, come on somebody, give a praise. The grace is upon me. And last week, we got an opportunity to kick off the series, I'm Grace for This, and that His grace is upon me. We have uncovered the vital revelation of Jesus' grace. And how did we do that? We talked about what He did on Calvary. Somebody say, what He did on Calvary. What He did on Calvary. I got a little whistle. I know my voice is a little more high-pitched than Dr. V. I don't know if the side monitors, floor monitors are still on. Okay. Bless the Lord. And we learned last week what grace is, right? We learned last week what grace is. Grace is the unmerited, undeserved, unearned kindness and favor. Somebody say kindness and favor. Kindness and, favor. and we didn't do anything to get it. It was a free gift. Uh, last week, I also talked about how we are products of grace. Somebody look to your neighbor and say, I'm a product. <laughs> okay, y'all didn't do it the way I thought y'all was going to do it in my mind when I said for you to do it and you didn't do it. So I'm going to look at you because you look good. You look like you're a product. Go ahead. Say to me and I'm going to say to you, I'm a product, I'm a product. of grace. Uh, y'all ain't got to be in this. This is me and her, right? We products, right? Bless the Lord. We're a product of grace. Now, if y'all believe that this morning, I'm going to give the command one more time and say, I'm a product, I'm a product of, grace. of grace. Last week, I wore my representation shirt, and on the back of the shirt, it said this, grace cannot be earned. It is a gift from God. We do not deserve it. God meets our indifference with forgiveness. We are so indifferent about so many different things. We are so indifferent. Most times we don't agree on nothing. 
And then when we can't come to a part to agree with one another, Jeff, we just become indifferent. And God said, with that indifference, I'm just going to forgive y'all. Because he said, I can get some stuff done if you would just, if two of you would just agree. That's right. If two of you would just come together, there I am in the midst and I can make things happen. We sang a song this morning about grace that releases miracles, but it only happens when we come together in unity. Somebody say, I'm going to come together in unity. I'm going to come together in unity. That's what the product of grace does. It's a free gift. It's a paid in full gift. This is what we learned last week. I'm doing a real quick recap, Nana. Are you ready? Everybody buckle your gray seatbelt because this is God's riches at Christ's expense. How many of y'all like the, the, the poet that we just saw in the announcements? Now, he had an acrostic format. I couldn't even write it all down, and I hope y'all caught it. If you didn't catch it, we'll make sure that we get it to you if you'd like to see it again. But what I put down for us to remember is God's riches at Christ's expense. Somebody say, it's God's riches, it's God's riches. at Christ's expense. At Christ's expense. Bless the Lord. And in Ephesians, as we spoke about last week, that for by grace we have been saved through faith and that not of yourself. Say, I didn't do it for me. I didn't do it for me. He did it for me. He did it, for me. it is the gift of God, not of works that we should boast. The only thing that we should do is give praise. The only thing that we should do is have a gratitude in our attitude and lift up the name of Jesus Christ that he gave this to me, Jeff. Like I can walk through what I'm walking through because of the grace. Somebody say grace, 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 grace. And because of the grace, grace, we learned all of that last week. How many of you guys were blessed tremendously on the testimony of the father and the son, Dick and Rick, where his father carried the son through everything with the grace that means that we have some attributes of grace and because we have some attributes of grace i'm just going to touch them i'm going to give you the scripture so that you can go and search them somebody say i'm going to search them i'm going to search them now i did the homework i'm not saying y'all have to look it up yourself i'm saying write it down Capture the, the, the slide that I provided for you and then do your homework this week and read more about the attributes of grace. There's saving grace. Somebody say saving grace. Saving grace. There's sufficient and supplying grace. Somebody say sufficient and supplying grace. Sufficient and supplying grace. Now, this is a little bit different, right, Sean? Because sufficient means it's enough, right? Sufficient means it's enough. I got all I need. Isn't that right, Mother Emily? But check this out. Supplying means that he gives on top of that. That's right. Means he'll give more. more. He says, I'll do exceedingly abundantly all you can ask to think. I can't park the car here. Got to keep going. In gear, here we go. Sustaining grace. Somebody say sustaining grace. Sustaining grace. Then we got sanctifying grace. Uh -oh. I'm just going to idle here just for a little right, bit. Right, sanctifying grace is holiness. Oh, y'all like, oh, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. No, he that's said you. that we should be holy. How do we get holy? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. He said sanctify, meaning we got to be set apart, set aside, not doing what we used to do on this side of the right. street. Right. Mm -hmm. When we said to Jesus, yes, we crossed over. Somebody say, I crossed over. I crossed over. And if you sanctify, you ain't over here double dutching. Uh -huh. <laughs> You ain't double dusting the stinger. You ain't, you ain't going back like, hey, um, uh, uh. we're not double dusting. We sanctify. Somebody say, I'm sanctified. Because we get sanctifying grace. And then lastly, it's supernatural grace. Somebody say supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. I started to have Kyle and Jeff and, and, and Brother Sean up here and just do the flex. Because this is what God does. He, he gives you a faith muscle. And I was going to use um, a, the, the stature of these brothers to say, there's a supernatural grace that comes from heaven. In your natural weakness, God puts some super on it. Janelle, put some super where you can flex a little bit. When people are like coming at you at your job, you just flex your faith. Because I got supernatural grace. What'd you say to me? <laughs> What'd you say? I'm already hired. They're already paying me. My check has already been deposited. You can't put me out of Cubicle City. <laughs> 
that's for those who work in that. Or out the office. Come, come on, help me preach this thing, apostle. We got supernatural grace. Somebody flex with me. I got grace. I got grace. And all of these things, all of these attributes, I'm not unpacking them for you. But I gave you a start point. Somebody say, I can get started. I can get started. And what's going to help us in next week is when um, Dr. V comes back to his office duty in this pulpit, he's going he to unpack these for us. He's going to help us get the strength that we need to understand. Oh, what is that? One, two, three, four, five different attributes of grace. Yes. Somebody say, Grace, Grace. Grace, Grace. grace. And today's message, if you guys could just help me with my message title, because we're in the series, I'm Grace for This. Somebody say, I'm Grace for This. I'm Grace for This. But here's the part where God really wants you to internalize and say to yourself, my response to grace is grace, grace. Somebody say grace, grace. Grace, grace. We got to have a response to what we know that we have. And in the announcements, we talked about the plumb line. So let me just give you a definition. I know it gave you an explanation, but can I give you a definition this morning? Go ahead. It's in your slides. So if you don't keep up with me or if I stumble over it, just read it again later. Amen. Amen. A plumb line, also called a plummet, is a cord with a non-magnetic weight attached to one end. When the cord is held in such a way, not just any old kind of way. In such a way, the weight can dangle freely. How many of y'all just want to be free in some stuff? Can dangle freely and um, extract ver vertical, I'm sorry, vertical, what did you say? Exact. exact vertical can be determined. Painters, builders, and carpenters use the plumb line to keep their work straight it, for it is difficult while in the middle of a project how many of y'all are in the middle of a situation mm -hmm. trying to get some things straight mm -hmm. yeah and not many people are not in you know north and south maybe maybe we're trying to get our finances straight maybe we're trying to get our marriages straight maybe we're trying to get our parenting straight maybe we're trying to get our job security straight somebody say i need to get some things straight but in the middle of it, uh -huh. in the middle of a project to determine the true horizontal and vertical line without an objective measuring tool, so a plumb line has to be employed. Somebody say, has to be. Has to be. As you saw in the little commercial that I put, it brings order. Somebody say order. order. It brings things in alignment. Somebody say alignment. Alignment. A plumb line applies the law of gravity to, the, uh, to find the right angles to indicate the most direct route from top to bottom. You want things to be right from the top down. Somebody say from the top down. From the top down. Now, y'all not making it personal. From the husband to the kids. When we're talking about top down, I'm not just talking about from your head to your toes, even though y'all want to. Y'all want to have some things lined up. Somebody just stretch forth your hands. This is Pastor V. We're trying to line up. We're trying to line up that knee, y'all. We're trying to line up that knee. But from head, yeah, hug them. Hug them, elder. From head to toe, from the father to the littlest toes in the house, you want from top to bottom to keep things plumbed. And a plumb line does not change or move with the whims of the carpenter. So that means sometimes the head of household ain't doing it all the way right. That means, yeah, everybody got real quiet. Because you said, why you have to say the head of household? Head of household ain't always the man. Sometimes it's the woman of God that's holding things down. And it says, when the whims of the carpenter, when they move, the plumb line still stays straight. Somebody said the plumb line stays straight. The plumb line stays straight. It remains true and will work uh, and all work must line up with it and risk or it will risk being crooked. So that means anything that you're building, whether you're building a relationship whether you're building up your finances, whether you're building up your marriage, whether you're building up your ministry, you need a plumb line. Somebody say, I need a plumb line. I need a plumb line. 
I need a measuring rod that God will put in place. And I thank God that he brought this to our attention because he said last week, I'm talking to you. Somebody say he's talking to me. And when we were in Jeremiah 1 and 5, we realized that he didn't just talk to me one time. He said five times before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. He didn't say before I formed you, I talked to Terry. Before you were in the womb, I said something to Brother Brian. No, but he said, before you were born, I sanctify you. I didn't go and talk to Mama Emily before I sanctified you. He said, I ordained you a prophet of the nations. We might be your pastor's elder Kyle, but he already ordained you to be elder Kyle. Bless the Lord. And so because he spoke to you, somebody say he spoke to me. He He graced me and the grace is upon me. Somebody say the grace is upon me. me. Why is it on me? Because five times he said it. And we learned last week, five is the number of grace. Somebody throw up your five. I got five on it. Come on, wait. See, y'all sing with Pastor when he sing. I can't get no love. They're like, you already sang. Y'all already sing. Kyle, right behind you, he's like, mm, you ain't get me to do it. I got five. I'll do it myself. I got five on it. And God is saying, this is where your grace is. So this morning, I went to go write down in my notes, ask yourself this question. But God says throughout the whole message, I need them to make it individualized. I need you to make it personal. So this is what he said. Ask myself these questions because I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to myself this morning. I'm not just speaking to you. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to me, Jeff. And so ask yourself these questions. What should be my response to grace? Now, whether you want to write it down or you want to type it down, you just want to say the QR codes that you got. And then he said, number two is, what is my responsibility to this grace that came to me so freely? Then the third one is, how do I represent or represent the grace of God? How do I do that? Somebody said how? How? Oh, I'm so glad y'all listening. Bless the Lord. Because God has given us a way how. Here's number one, the response. Go with me in your word to Hebrews 12, verse 27 and 29. And it says this, now this yet once more indicates the removal of things that are being shaken. Is some things being shaken up in your life right now? If you got some shaky things going on in your life right now, this, this response right here, number one, is for you. Remove the things that are being shaken as of the things that are made, that are the things which cannot be shaken may remain. So that means that you'd have made a way somehow within your finances, you made a way within your marriage, within your relationship, within whatever it is that you're doing, you'd have made a way. Go ahead and confess with me today. I'm going to say it with y'all. I made my own way. Made way. We don't made our own way, but he said the things that cannot be shaken are the things that will remain. Therefore, since we are receiving the kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace. Somebody say grace. Grace. That means it's being offered, it's being gifted, it's being made apparent to you for you to have it, but you got to say, I got to have it. Somebody say, I got to have it. So let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. How many of you know he's a consuming fire? So that means we have to have reverence, but this is our response. This is what he said to me in my notes last night. God allows, God permits, and God even wills our lives to be reduced for us to give him produce. Mm. That's good, man. He allows, he permits, yes, he and he wills for your life to get a reduction. Wow. To get a reduction so that he can see a production. Mm. How many of y'all believe that? If you don't, I got proof. Here we go. 
In Hebrews 12, 3 and 11, it says, Jesus said that God, uh, Jesus says that God in love prunes us. He chastens after us. He tries us so that we can become profitable. That sounds like produce, right? Right. It sounds, and the pruning sounds like reduce, right? It means a cutting away. Things that we think we should have, he says, cut it off. Things that we keep holding on to, he just says, cut it off, Jeff. Let it go. Put it down. And then I also put in there what he says in, in, in John, and I just want you guys to go there. John 15, 4 and 8, 16 and 17, it talks about him being the vine. And he cuts away, but we got to stay in him. Somebody say, I've got to stay in him. Because if we don't stay in him, we become dead wood. We don't just get cut away. Some of us get snapped off. And then we get piled up. Somebody say piled up. And that pile is only good for fire. Now, I don't know about you. I don't want to burn. <laughs> I don't want to burn. Look to your neighbor and say, I don't want to burn. Uh -uh, I want to live. I don't want to burn. <laughs> I don't want to burn. So check this out. If you don't want to burn, then don't frustrate the grace. Y'all think I'm making this up? Go to Galatians 2, 20 and 21. I know this is a hard word. Who can hear? But you're here. So I pray you're hearing. Go with me to Galatians 2 and 21. Don't frustrate the grace. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't frustrate it. Don't frustrate it. No, for real. Tell, tell them what add to. Don't do it. Don't frustrate it. Don't do it, Nana, pop up. Don't frustrate the grace. I'm trying to get it in, I'm trying to get it in. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Let not, not, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, somebody say, I now live this life. In the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself to me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Somebody say, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ died in vain. Now, we all know Christ didn't die in vain. We all know he didn't die in vain. So somebody say, don't frustrate the grace. Don't frustrate the grace. Ooh, let's keep moving. I'm moving quick. All right. So number two, responsibility, your responsibility. We ask those questions. Here are some of the answers. And you can cheat because it's on the screen. Bless the Lord. Go with me to first Peter chapter four, seven through 10. And it says the end of all things is near. How many of y'all know in the last days of the last days? But the end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and be sober minded so that you may pray above all things. Love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sin. That means when y'all trespass against each other, I mean, you tick your, your spouse off, you tick your friend off, you, you upset your, your church family member. He said, Love covers a multitude of sins. Somebody say grace covered it. Grace covered it. Offer hospitality to one another with, um, without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have. How many of you guys have a gift? Come on. That, that one come out. You got a gift, beautiful. Raise your hand and be confident that we have a gift. God gave us a gift and, and we receive it to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. So somebody say, I got to use my gift. Because when we don't use our gift, we fail the grace. Somebody say, fail the grace. Now, why am I getting y'all to repeat after me? Because I need this to get into you. Somebody say, I got to get it in. Somebody say, fail the grace. In Hebrews chapter 12, 15, it says, look after each other. Now, I just said love one another. Now we're looking at each other. I see you. You see me? I see. See you. Got you. Got you. I'm going to need the glasses after service. <laughs> look after each other so that none of you fail to receive the grace of God. What does that mean by look after? When I've been seeing you MIA, 
How do I see you in my A? Meaning the seat is empty. I don't see you here. When I see that you have not been with us, I have to look after you. I have to call after you. I have to text you. I got to call you. Not because I'm bugging you. Not because I'm harassing you. A good shepherd looks after the sheep. Somebody say, look after the sheep. Look after the sheep. So your pastors or your brother and sister in Christ who's saying, beloved, I hope to see you on Sunday, is not harassing you. Somebody say, I'm not being harassed. But you're being looked after so that none of us fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out for the poisonous root of bitterness. Shut say that. Oh my goodness. That's what I'm talking about. Say that. Watch out for the poisonous root of bitterness grows up in uh, to trouble you and corrupt many. First, it starts with you. Janelle, let me share with you. This is how it starts, right? I'm a little bothered because when I got there and I was doing meet and greet and I tried to hug her and she just turned her back. And now, well, then I'm just going to be on the other side and I ain't going to say nothing to her. And then she did it again the following Sunday. Now I'm going to come over here and tell Sister Tara. Because last week I tried to hear, hug Terry twice. Can you believe she turned her back to me? Rooted bitterness. I done held on to this thing for two weeks. Jeff, I'm coming to tell your wife now. This is the third week. And now because it's the third week and I'm still talking about it, Sean, I'm corrupting others. Because now, well, if Terry ain't hugging her, what's wrong with her? Janelle's sweet. She's kind. I ain't going to hug her then. And now ain't nobody hugging. Everybody's staying on this side and ain't nobody crossing no waters. God says if the bitterness grows up, do you know it's a seed? that you plant within yourself, within your heart, and then you water it with your own thoughts. And then it begins to take root and everything that has root shows some produce fruit. And it don't matter what seed you plant. If it's bitterness, guess what? You're going to have bitter fruit. And it's going to come out every Sunday like I can. (laughs) Not so. God says, don't corrupt many. Somebody say, don't fail the grace. So here we are in three, because I got to get moving. I got to get moving. I'm out of here. Number three is rep- represent and represent. Somebody say represent, represent. And, represent. and represent. This is one of my favorite scriptures this uh, morning. I get the pleasure of having Elder Haley in the building with us. Somebody give God praise all the way from California. And if you don't want to shout, don't. It, it's all right. Y'all like, who's Elder Haley and why is he sitting so close to our pastor? It's our brother. It's my brother all the way from California. He got an assignment to be out here for a week and he's loving on us and fellowshipping with us. And thank God for you being here, sir. But when we grew up at five o'clock in the morning, every morning, morning, our father, Reverend James A. Haley, would wake us up to Romans six and one. Right. Half sleep. Didn't even get a chance to brush our teeth. And we would have to say, what shall we say then? Shall we continue on sinning that his grace may increase? These are questions. And I used to wonder, why did the Bible always put questions? Because he wants you to question within yourself, what are you doing to respond and your responsibility and your representation to the grace that God did on Calvary, Tara. So he said that the grace may increase, but by no means, means surely not. God is not going to keep endowing his grace upon you if we keep on sinning. If we keep on testing God in this way, Sheldon, Before you know it, have you ever walked outside and you know it was raining, but you decided, I'm going to go without an umbrella today? What happens? Your clothes become soaked. That's right. Soaking wet. Now, check this out. We can go out in the elements, Jeff, with an umbrella, and we might get a little sprinkle on us, but we don't get drenched and then become miserable. And I think I was talking to Sheldon about it. He said, and then cold and bothered. And now my, my socks are soggy. And now I got an attitude today because I chose to go out without my covering. Somebody say, keep your covering. 
Keep your covering. So here we go. I'm going to pick back up. We are, the, um, we are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? If you died in your sins by giving your life to Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, why are you still in the sinful nature? Do not offer any part of yourself as an instrument to wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been bought by death, unto, brought unto death to life, and then offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master. Say, it's not my master no more. Not my master no more. Because you are not under the law, but you are under grace. Somebody say, I got to be under this grace. I got to be under this grace. Because if you're not under the grace, and please forgive my uh, tech, technical uh, team, which is the me within me, it's supposed to say fall from grace. Somebody say fall from grace. Fall from grace. Because when you fall away, it says in Galatians 5 and 4, for if you are trying to make yourself right with God by keeping the law, meaning I just show up every Sunday, that's me keeping the law. I made a promise to myself, I'm going to go to church every day this year, and I'm not going to miss it. And that's your own law. And God says, if you're trying to keep yourself right with God in that manner, it's not going to work. You have been cut off by Christ. And you have fell away from God's grace. Somebody said, you can't fall away. Can't fall away. You can't fall away. So then I need you guys to take these away. I need you guys to receive these as we play some music receive these takeaways we must not find ourselves as the scriptures has shown us today has presented to us today we should not find ourselves guilty of frustrating the grace elder kim i'm, I'm gonna need you to assist me on something and if you can grab that table and items we should not find ourselves guilty of frustrating the grace or failing the grace or even falling from the grace. However, we must do what the questions was asking of us. We must have a response to the grace. Somebody say, I must have a response to the grace. I must have a response to the grace. We have a responsibility to the, the grace. And then we have a re-representation that we should have. And what should it be? We should be positioned as our pastor has said. I opened up in Zechariah talking about Zerubbabel. And if I could just give you some highlights as Elder Kim is setting up for me. And Zerubbabel's story was a story where a man of God was called by God. Somebody say, a man of God, a man of God. Was, called God was called by God to rebuild, restart, and rebirth a city and the temple of God. And when he started the project, a great mountain came before him. A great mountain, not... Um, as we know it, where there's a terrain and all of this stuff, but a great mountain of lawsuits and squatters and people who would come to the project and what he was working on, but they wouldn't work with him. They wouldn't work alongside him. They wouldn't be a part of the growth. They wouldn't be a part of the building. They were in there frustrating the grace. Somebody say frustrating the grace. Frustrating the grace. And the mountain of issues and drama and cattiness was happening while trying to build the house of the Lord. And this is the story of Zerubbabel. And the Lord spoke to him and encouraged him that even your biggest problems, all you have to do is shout grace, grace to it. Somebody shout out grace, grace. Grace, grace. All you have to do is shout out grace, grace to him. And he said, and I'll make it plain. I declare the word of the Lord over our lives and our hearing today that whatever your mountain is, God says, I'm willing to make it plain for you. Good, if you're willing to shout grace, grace, who's ready to say grace, grace? Grace, grace. Come on. Who's ready to say grace, grace? Grace, grace. Because God is looking to do it for you. 
I love the part of the text where he wanted to make sure that it had nothing to do with your own strength. Because it's not by might, it's not by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. Somebody say grace, grace. Grace, grace. But the only way that you get grace, grace, is that you got to be in the place, place. Somebody say, I got to be in the place, place. So many of us think we can get our own grace at home. I'm sitting on my couch and I'm watching Joel Osteen today. I'm sitting on my couch and I'm watching T.D. Jakes. I'm sitting on my couch and, ooh, I love Steve Ferdy. And we're listening to all of these tele-evangelists and television mega pastors and this, that, and the other. But those are not your local pastors. Jeff, if you call for Dr. V, he's there. You call uh, one of them folks that I just named. They, they gonna take a message. They gonna tell you to email their, you know, response team, and they gonna send you a letter and probably tell you for five dollars they gonna give you some holy oil. But in your local area, in the local place of Havre de Grace, there's a man of God who's been called to build a city called to build a church with a plumb line in his hand to get things in order, not just in the house of the Lord, but in your house. Somebody say my house. My house. But we got to be in place. Not in and out. Not double dutching. And so I have my sister in Christ here helping me out. Now, I thought I had three different. Do I got Dr. Pepper? Mm -hmm. Let's get some Dr. Pepper up here. <laughs> my assistant this morning. And so... Miss Vanna White, can, yes. can, can you tell me what is on the labels right here? We have family. We have family. Friends. Friends. And faith. And faith. Somebody say that's life. That's, that's life. life. In everybody's life, we have family. Somebody say family. Family. We have faith. Faith. And we have friends. Friends. With our friends, we have a lot of fun, right? Yeah. And, and it's sweet. It's really sweet. What's your favorite drink? Pepsi. Let's go ahead and grab some Pepsi. And in our friend's life, we, ooh, doesn't that sound good? Hanging out with our friends. Ooh, do you hear the sizzle? Oh my goodness, she invited me to a concert. We're going out. Oh, it happens to be on a Sunday. I'm going to go there and not go to church. Let's go ahead and pour that with our friends. Ooh, it looks good. It looks refreshing. It's Kim's favorite. She's going to partake. Because this is what life does. And we fill up areas of our lives, parts of our lives, with bubbly, carbonated, gassy stuff. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, well, what about our faith? Because we do like coming to church, right? We do. We do yeah. like coming to church, but we don't like the drama of sister such and such. I'm not saying any names. Didn't <laughs> hug us last week, right? <laughs> Terry was like, I can take it, I can take it. <laughs> Didn't hug us last week. And, and so it's, it's like Coca-Cola because it's a little flat. It's a little flat. It's, not, yeah, yeah. it's a little flat. It's a little flat. I mean, I'm going to church, but I'm not getting anything out of it. I'm just checking the block. I'm here. It's still bubbly. It looks good for the partaking. No, fill it up. Fill it up because I want, I want them to know. I was lifting my hands during praise and worship. You know, fill it up some more. Some more. I clapped when Pastor Yvonne told me to clap. That's good. That's good. Bless the Lord. But then we got some folks that already feel like I'm sanctified. I've done some stuff. I got a title behind my name, in front of my name, around my name. I'm in school right now. So I'm a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> No, <laughs> no shade, no shade. I'm a Dr. That Pepper. Only That's not, yeah, it's only, <laughs> no cap, no cap. But I'm a doctor, so I come in and I'm a little, you know, I mean, it's all right. They got these little backdrops up and little rugs down. Is that scotch tape on the floor? <laughs> Go ahead and pour the Dr. Pepper because now I'm holding my head up. And this is what life does life pours things in little areas yeah. of our lives. Yeah. And just like I was talking about that rooted bitterness. Now, if you can do me a favor yeah. with the faith, I know it's got a lot in there, without trying to spill it, can you just lift it up for me? Yeah. And let's lift it up pretty high. Now I got two cameras going. 
Somebody tell me, can you see through this vessel? No. Come on. No. It's not a trick question. We can't see through this vessel, but it's the thing in our, what, what, in our faith that we still can't see God in. It's the thing in our faith we still can't see God in, but we still choose to put it in our vessel. Go ahead and pour it in there. Yeah, yeah, it don't matter if it spills. Go ahead and fill it up. And then it gets all bubbly and stuff, and then you can go ahead and set that to the side. Now, we missed a few Sundays because we're hanging out with our friends and all that sweet stuff with the Pepsi. Yeah, let's lift that up and see if we can see through that. It's the things that the world puts in us that we think we have to have week in and week out more than God. Can somebody tell me, can we see through this? We can't see through that. But yet and still, we still choose to put it in our vessel. My goodness. This is us. And we're filling up with the things that we say we need to have. Faith, fr friends, and family. But what we filled it with is things that we can't see. One more thing. What, what, what is this one? Is this family? The drama. What am I talking about? The drama. Siblings not talking to siblings. Parents that have adult children that don't even talk to each other anymore. I don't see my son. I don't speak to my daughter. I'm challenged with even being in the same space with them. I'm challenged with even sharing Christ with them because before we start talking, we're already arguing. We're already beating each other down. Husbands, and wives debating over what should be done in the one house that they said they gave to the Lord. Can we see through it? Come on, lift your voice. Can we see through it? No, it becomes dark, dismal in our own homes, in our own relationships with family members, but yet and still, we still put it in our vessel. Mm, spill. Go ahead, fill it up. Now we're running over with darkness and we think we're filled with the right things but God says I want to give you the grace somebody say I, I need the grace, I need the, grace. <laughs> the position for the poor in 2024 was given to us at the beginning of the year by Dr. V and he said God will restore how many of us need some restoring in our faith need restoring in our families need restoring with our friendships somebody say grace grace, grace, grace. now i'm going to ask elder kim to slowly start pouring now i got two of them elder haley come help me with the second one because when god gives grace go ahead and start pouring it and pour it all the way in but do it slowly when god starts pouring it in he didn't require any of us to pour out all of the drama that we just brought in. He just required us to get in position for his pouring. Many of us feel like I gotta clean up my own act and dump the things that I've done in my life or poured into my life in order for me to start seeing things more clearly. But God said, if we just get in the place, somebody say, get in the place, for more of his grace, He'll begin to start clearing up our family life. He'll begin to start clearing up our faith. He'll begin to start clearing up our relationships with our friends. Somebody say, fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. But this only happens when you're in the place. Come on, keep going. Because he says, my cup runneth over. Look at all the things that you did come in here with and where it's at now. Look at what God does for you now if you just stay into what you're into. Somebody say, I need to stay in the grace. I need to, oh no, keep pouring. I need to stay in the grace because God says, as long as you stay here, I'll keep pouring. I need to be clear on what to do with my daughter. I need to be clear what to do with my husband and my children. Lord, keep pouring your grace so that the messiness, the darkness in me 
begins to clear up. Lord, help me with my faith and trusting you that one day I'll be as transparent and as white as snow as your Bible promises I would be. Somebody give God praise for the grace grace. This is what we need. Thank you. I'm going to give an altar call. And last week, I gave an altar call with an invitation for you to come forward so that the grace can be upon you. And whether you are here or not, that opportunity and that invitation is still available today. But as you saw with the illustration, Mother Emily, many of us sit here and we think there's no need for me to come to Jesus. I'm already here. So why can't he just touch me where I'm at? Many of us are sitting right where we're at and we're asking God to move for us. Where do you want him to move at? I, you first got to want him to move in you. And if he moves in you, then that means he can move you. <laughs> Bless the Lord. So there is an altar appeal this morning. There's an invitation this morning. As you saw the illustration, you can be that vessel that is not clear. That got all the bubbly, gassy stuff in it. And God can filter it out. He's not telling you to dump it before you come up here. He's telling you to place it in position so that you can be positioned for the poor, for more grace, grace. Amen? Amen. For more grace, grace. Come on, let's stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Have you heard a word this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Have you heard a word this morning? Yes. Somebody shout grace, grace. Grace, grace. Hallelujah. So this morning. Thank you for joining and participating in our Agape Church Sunday morning expectation service virtually. We're so blessed that you chose to tune in and spend a part of your Sunday morning with Christ Jesus and his children here at Agape. We pray and believe with expectation that you received a word from God for your life today with revelation unto your transformation. If today's word inspired you in a special way, we would love to hear from you. You can connect and reach us by phone or email. Text need prayer, new member, one info, two, four, four, three, six, four, zero, seven, four, nine, one. You can also reach us via email. Prayer member or info at lovelikehim.today. We look forward to connecting with you real soon. God bless you and have a great Sunday. And remember always to love like Him.